thank you all for joining me. Uh, today I'm going to be giving a presentation on the first quantitative study uh, in human subjects on the characterization of mystical experiences brought on by Phytomeo DMT containing toad venom um, and a comparison with prior psilocybin studies. So um, this study was um, led by Dr. Joseph Barsuglia who is the clinical research director at Crossroads Ibogaine Treatment Clinic, and Alan Davis, who is a postdoc research fellow at the University of Michigan. Um, as he said before, I was a research assistant on this study. And um, so I'm going to start this off by talking a little bit about the uh, addiction epidemic that at least is present in the United States and I'm sure is present also in other parts of the world, but I'm going to be focusing on the United States. So in a study that came out in 2015, they found that between 1999 and 2010, opioid sales, opioid deaths, and opioid treatment admissions all increased significantly. And that same survey found that in every age group of the population, the rate of stays related to opioid pain reliever use increased between 1993 and 2012 and they found that although the number of new non-medical users of opioid pain relievers had decreased um, overdose deaths addiction treatment admissions and other adverse public health outcomes were dram increased dramatically since 2002 and most recently in a new york times um, speculative survey they found that they estimated between 59,000 to 65,000 people had died as a result of drug overdoses in the U.S. And so this epidemic has led researchers and psychiatrists to look for other ways of treating addiction, um, alternative ways of having pharmacological interventions that could potentially reduce addiction. And so that's led us to Ibogaine. Um, as many of you know, Ibogaine um, can potentially stop withdrawal symptoms and reduce cravings for opioid-related um, addicted individuals. And um, in a more recent study, um, they studied with polysubstance users with alcohol stimulants, and they found that 61% of those participants were able to remain abstinent. Um, and so the results of that study suggest that Ibogaine can be a safe and effective treatment for the dependence on stimulant and other non-opiate drugs. So this is, this is important because this study happened at an Ibogaine treatment center. Um, in addition to Ibogaine centers, there's been a lot of research in the United States in regards to psilocybin. And so in the psilocybin studies, we found that the mystical experience plays a critical role in the reduction of addictive behavior outcomes. Um, there was a study that came out in 2015 led by Albert Garcia Romeo, Gar Roland Griffiths, and Matthew Johnson, which demonstrated, um, as you can see in the chart uh, that came from their study, that with higher scores on the Mystical Experience Questionnaire, which is a standardized uh, questionnaire used to measure the level of mystical experience, um, that there was a decrease in the craving for nicotine in the six months following the treatment. Um, this also was reflected in the psilocybin and alcohol proof of concept study led by Michael Bogenschultz, and there was a discussion about that yesterday, which was great. And um, Bogenschultz also, um, Bogenschutz, sorry, also reviewed past literature on psychedelic assisted therapies and showed that mystical experiences across many different psychedelics played a critical role in meeting uh, addictive behavior outcomes. And so that leads us to 5-MeO-DMT, which has a great um, anecdotal history of producing powerful mystical experiences. So we'll talk a little bit about 5-MeO-DMT. Um, it was first synthesized in 1936 um, by Toshio Hoshino and Kenya Shimodara. And, um, it was, and more recently, it was found that 5-MeO-DMT is a psychoactive endoalkamine, 
um, which is a DMT molecule essentially with an oxygen atom at the fifth position. And uh, it acts as a non-selective serotonin agonist at the 5-HT2A and 5-HT1A receptors, um, causing many physiological and behavioral changes. It also is O-demethylated by CYP2D6 to bufotenine, which is an active metabolite. And um, it's also been found to be an endogenous sigma-1 receptor ligand, which we know has implications in inflammation and um, immune system response. So I, I put this chart here, or this image, just so you can see the similarities of 5-MeO-DMT to many of the other psychedelics that are, tryptamine psychedelics that are known, as well as serotonin. Um, and I won't talk too much about the chemistry because it's not really my area, but it's good to see, be able to see the similarities. Um, 5-MeO-DMT was first isolated from the bark of Dictyloma incanensis in 1959 by Ir Irwin Pachter, David Zacharias, and Oscar Ribeiro. And um, more commonly, it's found in the venom of the Bufo alvarius toad. And concentrations so far have formally been identified up to 15%. So this is the source of the 5-MeO-DMT um, that was used in this study. And so we'll talk a little bit more about the toad and some of the implications of that later on. 5-MeO-DMT has also been found in trace amounts in the Anadenanthra peregrina seeds, also known as Yopo, and um, also in the resin of the Varola theodora tree. And both of these were traditionally administered intranasally um, by blowing the powder of these um, substances up the nose um, in these traditional cultures. So now we can talk a little bit about this study. So this study with 5-MeO-DMT containing toad bufotoxin took place at Crossroads Ibogaine Treatment Center located in Mexico. This program um, had two different programs. There was an addiction program and a psycho-spiritual program. In the addiction program, it was a one-week Ibogaine detox. And so on day three, the patients would take Ibogaine. And then on day six, they would receive the 5-MeO-DMT. In the psycho-spiritual program, it was a four-day program instead of one week. And on the first day, they would receive Ibogaine, and on the third day, they would receive the 5-MeO-DMT. Uh, the doses of Ibogaine were 15 to 20 milligrams per kilogram for the addiction, and 10 to 15 milligrams per kilogram of Ibogaine hydrochloride. And in addition, which I think is especially important, is that they did receive um, therapeutic preparation and post-session integration um, with the option of continued aftercare afterwards. As part of the study, patients received 50 milligrams of toad venom, which is approximately equal to 5 to 7 milligrams of freebase DMT, um, which is considered to be a light, moderate dose by Ralph Metzner. And this was vaporized following Ibogaine treatment. Um, this was administered by a medicine practitioner with the supervision of a medical professional. And this was done after guided meditation and guided breathing exercises. Um, the session was accompanied by instrumental music. And as I've said before, to date there have been no published quantitative studies on the mystical experience effects of 5-MeO-DMT containing toad venom in humans. So we'll talk a little bit about the methods. Um, so we used data from 44 participants, uh, patients. 61% of those were male, the median age being 34.6 years, the youngest being 25, and the oldest being 57. Um, Two-thirds of those were addiction clients, and one-third was psychospiritual. 75% were Caucasian, 18% other ethnicities, and 7% were Asian. And they were predominantly U.S. citizens traveling to Mexico for the treatment. 
All of the patients were screened according to the global ibogaine therapy guidelines provided by the Global Ibogaine Therapy Alliance and uh, for major medical and psychiatric exclusions. So the medical exclusions would have been cardio, pulmonary, or gastric um, related. And the psychiatric exclusions were if they had diagnoses of personality disorders, they were excluded. Um, so for the measures, they were administered the States of Consciousness Questionnaire. So the States of Consciousness Questionnaire is a 100 item questionnaire, which includes within it the Mystical Experiences Questionnaire. Um, and the Mystical Experiences Questionnaire was analyzed and cut down to 30 items, which became the MEQ 30. And so this was the measure that was used in the Johns Hopkins study, which we compared our scores with but we also use data from the other items from the States of Consciousness questionnaire in order to get a better idea of what effects 5-MeO-DMT uh, has. So the individual items are rated zero to five, zero being none, none effects experienced to extreme levels of that. So the MEQ-30, like I said, it was found, it has four subscales. So the first subscale is unity, noetic quality, sacredness. The second one is positive mood. The third is transcendence of time and space. And the fourth is ineffability. And I'll talk a little bit more about what those are. Um, so a complete mystical experience was counted when more than 60% of the max possible score is endorsed on all four subscales. So that means that 60% um, of each subscale was rated as strong or extreme. And we compared our findings on the MEQ-30 items with the MEQ-30 items of the Roland Griffith study that was published in 2011. So transcendence of time and space. So some examples of items in that section would be loss of your usual sense of time, uh, loss of usual sense of space, loss of usual awareness of where you are. Ineffability, uh, that would be sense that experience cannot accurately be described in words, sense that in order to describe parts of the experience, you have to use statements that are illogical, paradoxical, um, or that include contradictions. Positive mood, like you see Captain Jean Picard here, um, he's experienced a pretty positive mood, so experience of overflowing energy, uh, experiences of ecstasy, feelings of infinite or universal love. And finally, mystical experiences. So this was one that included the noetic quality, um, the unity and sacredness. So some examples would be experience of oneness or unity with objects or persons perceived in your surroundings experience of the insight that all is one, experience of pure being and pure awareness, uh, experience of amazement, sense of being at a spiritual height, feeling that consciousness experienced during the session was more real than everyday waking consciousness. So that brings us to our results. So in this chart are the states of consciousness questionnaire items which were rank ordered by more than or equal to 75% of the sample. So these really are the strongest characteristics. These are what define the 5-MeO-DMT experience that really make it its own. Um, so the most common effects that we saw were a sense of awe or awesomeness, experience of amazement, feelings of peace and tranquility, loss of your usual sense of time, and feelings of joy. In addition to that, um, and th these are all on the MEQ-30, in addition to that, we also compiled the highest rated challenging experience items. So we found items in the States of Consciousness questionnaire that maybe identified things that were difficult to experience. And so the top ones that really stick with 5-MeO-DMT are profound experience of your own death, feeling of disintegration or falling apart, and emotional and or physical suffering. And so those were endorsed by 15% or more um, of our sample as strong or extreme. 
We also, here we have a chart which compares the MEQ30 scores for each of the subscales to the psilocybin studies that were done. Um, and so in the, in the green bar, that's represented by, that represents the 50 milligrams of toad bufotoxin. The yellow bar represents a moderate high dose of psilocybin, which is 20 milligrams per 70 kilograms. And the orange bar represents uh, a high dose of psilocybin of 30 milligrams per 70 kilograms. And I, I don't know if you can see very well, but you can see that these are the, uh, the lines of error. Um, but essentially, what we found was that 5-MeO-DMT, sorry, uh, an, a light or moderate dose of 5-MeO-DMT containing toad bufotoxin occasions mystical experience at an intensity and frequency similar to moderate high to high doses of psilocybin. So that kind of brings us into our future considerations. So the, um, the short duration of action of 5-MeO-DMT and the reliability of this compound in producing mystical experiences might have some advantages over other psychedelics like LSD or psilocybin in a clinical therapeutic context uh, for clinical and psycho-spiritual interventions. Um, I, I think, so I spoke a little bit about the toad and so future studies could use synthetically produced 5-MeO-DMT hydrochloride um, this would reduce the ecological impact that the harvesting of toad venom is having on the toads and um, would also allow um, clinicians to administer the medicine intramuscularly, which would be more acceptable as a treatment option um, by the FDA or other health services. Uh, it would also allow for a more accurate understanding of the effects of specifically 5-MeO-DMT and would reduce the exposure to potentially toxic compounds that are present in the bufotoxin because the full analysis of bufotoxin has not fully been done. Um, and as I'm saying, so further analysis of the additional constituents of the venom is needed. So we do know that the venom primarily contains 5-MeO-DMT and when vaporized it's highly likely that that's the primary compound that is being received but there is the potential that other compounds could be creating um, additional effects or even possible harmful effects. We don't really know. Uh, we know that it's relatively safe, it's mostly safe, but there are some dangers and by working with the pure 5-MeO-DMT, we'd have a better idea of what those other um, elements are. Um, we also know that in the future, psychotherapy would have to make space for peak mystical and peak challenging experiences. So really um, needing a lot more in the vocabulary of psychotherapy and counseling in the sense of preparation and integration. Um, and finally, the potential use of this compound for spiritual applications and for spiritual practices. Uh, that's way down the line, but it's something that, you know, as we've talked about uh, in general with psychedelics, there, there's great potential for their use in furthering spiritual practice, spiritual understandings. Um, and so that's one other future consideration. Any questions? <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, yeah, thank you very much.